All right, hey, well, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to start on part one upgrade to the Cervelo cockpit here. So I'm going to do some three parts I want to work on. The first thing I want to do is, like I mentioned in my previous video, is lower the stem down a little bit more. And while I'm at it, I'm going to switch that out to my shock stop stem, which allows me to have a little bit of damping up there, make it a little more comfortable ride. Yes, because I'm getting older and I sacrifice weight for a comfortable ride now. So anyways, but if I do lower any more, you can see how goofy that's going to look with, uh, with two inches of steer tube sticking up here. So I'm going to take this off, get it cut down, and then we'll reinstall it with the new stem. And another thing I need to do is, if you see up here, I've already lowered it a bit down from where it was down to here. And, it, and already the front brake cable you can see here is hitting the bottom of the stem. So if I go down any further, it's going to push this brake housing down more. And as you can see, that it's going to offset the brake there. So I'll need to cut this a little bit shorter, and that's pretty easy to do. I'll do that when I get the fork back. But for now, what I need to do today is take my fork off so I can take it down to the shop, have the steer tube cut off a little bit shorter, work on that. So first thing I need to do, take the wheel off, obviously, take the front brake off, which is just one bolt through the back here, get the front brake off. So we'll do that, wheel off, brake off, Take the stem off, pull out the fork, take it down to the shop, get it cut off. So let me get it set up and we'll get to work. Now the front brake comes off, it's held in by one bolt through the back of the fork here. So I got to go in there with an Allen key and undo it. So now up here we've got brake off, it's down here dangling. Now what I don't need to do is take the uh, top cap off here, loosen these two bolts, pull off the stem and the fork will drop right out. So here's me taking off the top cap here and there's what's underneath. Got two spacers up there and then that aluminum insert there. So if you when I take the spacers off you'll see there's the carbon fiber steer tube. Aluminum insert is actually supposed to be pressed down into the tube. And that's something we fixed at the shop, not supposed to be pulled up like that. Somehow the star nut had pulled it up a little bit. But so here I'm going through how many spacers I want to leave. That's about how much I want to cut off at the top because I want to leave those three, I'm going to slam the stem and have three spacers for any future adjustments. So I want to cut off basically that much. So there's a 15 millimeter spacer in my right hand. My left hand there is a 5 millimeter spacer. So about 20 millimeters total is what I want to cut off. So now I just need to put the new stem on, make a mark, so make sure I cut it to the right height, and take it down to the shot. There's a peak of the star nut I was talking about. That nut there is what the stem cap thrusts into, and that pulls down that whole assembly. So you can set the preload on the headset bearing. And that is one of the reasons I didn't do this job here at home, because I don't have a tool to set that uh, star nut to the proper depth after cutting off the steer tube. And I don't have a jig to cut the steer tube perfectly flush, so one of the reasons I actually took down the shot. So now we need to put the new stem on, like I said, make a mark. And that is done by sliding off the old stem, just like that. Comes right off, and then I gotta take those bottom spacers off. And you simply just slide your fork out. Binding the headset bearings, you don't want to lose those, so I'm sliding out nice and careful. Usually the grease holds them in, but you just want to be careful you don't knock them out and get them all dirtied up. There's the fork, it's surprisingly light, it's full carbon fiber, it's got a carbon fiber steer tube. Oh, and then here I'm just taking a Velcro strap and getting the handlebars up out of the way so they don't hang on the brake cables. So here's the fork, super light, like I said, I was pretty impressed. Uh, it's got a, it's a taper design, so you can see it's thinner diameter up top, and then tapers down to a larger diameter at the bottom. It's for added strength and durability. So, like I said, just got to slide this one back up so I can get a mark and take it down to the shop. So, carefully slide it back up in there, minding the headset bearings again. There we go. Pop it up in there and then I'm going to take the new stems, the shock stop stem. I'll go over some of the details about this in a bit here. 
but it may have a different height there, which is why I'm going to put it on and make the mark with this stem on, instead of the, the one that was on there, so. Slide that one on. Like I said, I'm going to slam it all the way down. Then I want to do, let's decide in between two or three spacers. I think I want three spacers. There they are, three five millimeters. Just for any future adjustments. If I want to sell it to someone that wants to raise it up, they can do that. And here we go with the spacer. So like I said, I want to do three spacers. And it's very important that you make the steer tube height below the top spacer because that stem cap is so what you want. You want that to bottom out on the spacer, not on the steer tube. So you want that stem cap to pull down that whole assembly, like I said. And that's how you set the preload on the headset pairing. So here I am with an inadequate marker trying to make a mark. Don't worry, I put a better mark on before I took it down to the shop. But so there I am, and just double checking that that mark is in fact below the top of the top spacer. And it looks like it is, so uh, right here I just took it out, put a better mark on there so the shop could see it. Took it down to the shop and got it cut. Alright, we're back from the shop. We got the steer tube cut down. They took about three quarters of an inch off of it from up top here. And they only charged me ten bucks, so that was pretty sweet. Now it's a matter of getting everything put back together. So we'll need to obviously put the fork up inside, the stem put on top of that, put the handlebars in there, and then put the brake on, put the new shock stop stem on, which I'll show you a little bit about in a second here, and get it all dialed in. So let's get to work. So what I'm going to do with the brake is just take the cable off, because obviously I can't cut the housing shorter with the cable inside of it. So I'm going to pull a little nipple off there, and then slide the housing out, so we can later pull the cable out and then cut the housing shorter. So that'll all make sense in a minute. That guy off. Now we can take this out. Let me set our brake aside for later. So here's a difference in stems. This is the one that was on there. It's just a zip, surface coarse aluminum, uh, fairly lightweight. I mean, a little bit heavier than carbon, but. That'll do it. I think it's a 110 or 120 millimeter long with a six inch, sorry, six degree drop or rise. And then here is the shock stop stem, which I had before. And I'm going to reinstall it on this bike because it makes it the ride so much more comfortable. So, And here we have the stem itself. I'm going to show you a little bit about it here. There's my little GoPro mount on. I mount my GoPro on top of the stem. That's pretty cool. Anyway, so there's the shock stop stem. Here's the zip one. They're both about the same dimensions. Six degree drop, about the same length. It looks like it. 110 or 120 long. So this one's quite a bit heavier though, unfortunately. It's pretty chunky. It weighs 310 grams. I've weighed it before. This one's probably 150. So you're adding about 150 grams or so, which is about a quarter of a pound. But you get the comfort of the suspension stem, so it's already set up. I would take a it apart if I was actually putting it on for the first time, but it's already set up uh, to my liking. And you can actually see the elastomers in there. Let me take this front thing off and you can see inside. There's a little bit about how it works. Uh, there's the stem itself, and there's a pro version of this stem now, which is a little bit lighter. It has like titanium hardware and stuff. It only saves like 50 or 60 grams, but I already have this one, so I'm just going to put this one back on. And what's inside are some elastomers that uh, allow for some movement along the pivot there. And actually, it'd probably be easier to show you the inside. So if you look inside there, you can see the elastomers. So when you push down on it, they squish and give you some suspension and it comes they provide you with different hardness elastomers so you can depend on your weight and needs you can put different bumpers in there to make it less or more squishy I currently have a blue and a yellow so that's what we're gonna go with so that's the difference between the stems uh, let's go put it on okay we'll just slide bearings are already in we're just slide this 
fork up inside of here. carbon fiber this has a carbon fiber steer and make sure you use some carbon fiber assembly lube so it doesn't slip around on you. I'm gonna put a little bit of this on there before I slide it on. Now you just slide the stem on. I'm gonna go all the way down. I'm gonna put the spacers on top. Get me it's down as far as I can. And it's gonna be negative six you can also do positive six if you want a more relaxed position but I'm gonna go for arrow so I'm going down. Spacers wise, little spacers in here. One, two, three, looks like three, just like I wanted, so that's cool. And there we go. So that's how it's gonna look, not too bad. Now, if I didn't cut it down, it would have looked like this. This is all the spacer stack that was on here. So if I didn't cut it down, it would look like that. And that is pretty goofy looking. So that is why I had the steer tube cut down. I cut off three quarters of an inch or approximately 15 millimeters. We took out this, well, 15 plus that, so 20 millimeters. And then we're down to here. So that looks more appropriate. So let's tighten that up a little bit right now. You can't really get the exact tightness so you get the wheel on so you can see if there's any play in the headset, but I'm gonna tighten up for now. Get these handlebars up on here, get them out of the way. Then we can set the play. Get the brake put on and then cut that front housing and we're ready to ride so i'm getting excited now just like i said we'll just tighten this up a little bit for now and we'll set the preload when we get it on the ground so let's just get these handlebars out of the way first so tighten that guy up just kind of snug for now okay that's pretty good to position. I want to tighten these evenly, obviously, and the same gap on the top as you do on the bottom and then torque it when you get it at the right angle five newton meters which is that little torque wrench I have. Alright, we're ready to tighten it because we can see it. Gotta make sure it's centered. So it's gonna be roughly like that, so I'm just gonna kinda snug it down for now. Until I get it on the ground I can really feel. I want it so put it like that for now. Anyway. Okay, so I just realized in order to set the preload, I like to have the front brake on so I can Grab the brake and kind of rock the bike back and forth to see if there's any play in here. So I guess I'm going to put the brake on first. Okay, so here's our front brake. And all you got to do is slide it through the hole in the front and then put the nut on the back and torque it down. So I already got a little bit of Loctite stuff on there and let's get it going. Get it centered as best you can before you tighten it down. All right, so front brake installed, and you'll be able to see what I mean. Since the stem is now lower, when I put this cable in here, so as you can see, the housing's installed with the length it was. You can see how it's all kind of bunched up under here and bent, and it's pushing down on this side and pushing the brake off center because this housing is too long. So, there's where it's hitting right there. What I'm going to do is shorten this up. 
to make this not do that. So all I need to do is take the cable out and cut the housing, slide the cable back in. So easy to get the cable out. You just you just depress your front brake lever, push the cable out, and here it comes. There it is. So there it's still there. So I need to pull it up so that I can cut it the right length. Pulled the cable sufficiently up out of the way. I'm going to take this guy off because I'm going to use that later. Put back on there and put it in there so I don't lose it. And then I'm going to cut this up a little bit. Let's see, probably about an inch. So I'm going to get my cutters and we will cut it down so that it is now there instead of smashing up into the stem like that. Got that cut. Check it out. Yep, no more, no longer rubbing and bunched up up there. That is perfect. So let's get the cable put back in. Sometimes there's a little burr in here. You gotta get out of the way so it doesn't grab on the cable. Nice and smooth. All right. Okay, now we're just gonna push the cable through in the front brake here. There it is. Okay, so I've determined through trial and error that the proper way to align the caliper is to put a wrench on this little bolt here. I didn't realize there was one there. It's a piece of Shimano where you just tighten it up and there's a little adjusting screw that kind of helps you center it. Shram's a little different. They have a kind of a nut here to help you align the brake. So this is a 13 millimeter wrench. So when you're putting your brake on and you're tightening it up, get, put a wrench on here as you're tightening it up back here. And this will align the brake centered between the wheel so that when you close the brakes, they close evenly. I didn't know that and I just figured that out. So thought I'd pass that tip on to you. So get yourself a wrench. Wrench goes over the front. Align it and then tighten it up. It will be nice and centered. So that's just about it as far as the front brake install goes. As you can see it's nice and centered now. All the things left to do now is to put the nipple on. Actually I might cut that a little bit short because there's a little excess there. So I'm gonna grab my cutters. And this is an awesome thing to invest in if you haven't yet. Get yourself a pair of legit cable cutters because if you're trying to do this with any other kind of dikes or cutters or whatever, it's always gonna leave frayed things that never works out. So well worth it, at least it if you're like me, working on your bike a lot, many times, that's super, super worth it. So I'm going to cut this down a little bit so it's not so long. Maybe right about, I don't know, there. Snap. So easy that is. Let's just see if we can reuse the same one since it's red. I don't have any red ones. There we go. All set. Okay, front brake done. That is looking sweet. It was nice and aligned. Now, since we have the front brake on, we can move along to setting the preload on the headset here. So let's get along the ground. Then we rock it back and forth, make sure it's not loose, and we'll snug down stem bolts, get the handlebars in the position we want, tighten these guys down, and then we are ready to rock. Okay, first step, we need to loosen this stuff up so that we can just preload on the headset. Get these all loosened up. These are, you want these totally loose so they can spin freely. Right? And then what we're going to do is tighten down the stem cap until it gets rid of the play. I don't know if you can... I don't know if that's visible, but it's clearly wobbling in the headset here. So I need to tighten this down to suck it down. Then we'll clamp this on to hold it. A little bit more. So you want to eliminate the play, the rocking back and forth, and make sure it still steers smoothly. And that's yeah, that's super smooth. And there's no play, so that is set there. So I just need to tighten these and torque them down. We're good to go. So. Looks pretty straight to me. Yep. 
All right, now we're going to tighten these down one at a time evenly. One on one side, one on the other side, top and bottom. Until it's snug and you need to use pork wrench. So absolutely get yourself one of these if you're doing any sort of important connection like this. So if you under torque it, obviously, and you're up in a sprint, it could come loose and you lose your steering, and that's obviously bad. If you over torque it, you're putting too much stress on this joint here. If you add more stress, as if you're doing a sprint, you could break it. So don't want it under torqued, don't want it over torqued. You want it set to the right amount. So please, if you're doing your own maintenance, get yourself a legit torque wrench. And that way, you're not going to get yourself into trouble. So these need to, be, need to be torqued down to 5 newton meters. Usually it says, yeah, right here, 5 newton meters. Same thing with the stem cap here. So once I get this in the right position, I'm going to torque these down too. Pretty tough. That one obviously is a click because when you get it to the right amount. There's one, two, three, and four. Okay. We all set. As you can see, we've got some suspension built into the stem now. That's going to make it nice and comfy. I am stoked on that. All right, well that just about does it for the front cockpit upgrade, phase one. Today I shortened, well I lowered the stem all the way by shortening the steer tube, having it cut down. Also switched over to my shock stock, shock stop stem, which is going to be awesome. So more, a little more comfort on the road. And, oh, yeah, and I shortened this front brake cable housing, so, so I hope you guys learned a little something about doing your own bike maintenance and upgrades. Thanks for watching this one. We got two more in the series. I'm going to do one more about getting around these little blip buttons because they just get in my way and I don't need them. So I'm going to take those off. And then another one, I'm going to clean up the front end a little bit by switching from this giant Garmin arm to that simple little mount that sticks off the front here. So. Two more coming up. Uh, those will be some short ones. Never have the time to deal. But anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you learned a little something. I'm excited to get back out there on the ride with my comfort stem. It's gonna be awesome. Looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, I'll see you out there on the road. Thanks for watching and enjoy your ride.